Welcome to the Be Free Show. Today's guest has met with heads of state and government officials. Let's hear his message on recreating Eden. Hello world, welcome to the Be Free Show. My name is Larika Chiang and I'm so happy that you tuned in today. Allow me to tell you a little bit about our show. The Be Free Show gives hope to the hopeless. If you have questions about life, we have real answers. Now, we have a special guest. He is a scientist, entrepreneur, and owner of his laboratory called Dove Environmental Corporation. He is also a pastor of Miramar Kingdom Community Center International and founder of it since 1995. He is the father of Matthew, Josh, and Leah, and husband of Angela Ramna. His overseer and covering is the late and great Dr. Miles Monroe and Ruth Ann Monroe. He is the author of four books, and today we will be speaking on his latest book, Recreating Eden. He is not only a pastor and scientist, but he is my mentor and spiritual father. Help me welcome Dr. Pepe Ramda. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. For especially this historical moment yes. where the first show is going to be aired all around the nation. Yes. I am truly honored to be the first Thank to be a part you. of this great show, to be free show. Thank you for coming. Now, this is an awesome wonder because he just came straight from Australia. He could have been sleeping, but he Happy is here yes. to speak to you, to give a word of wisdom, word of knowledge to you, to help reset your mind and your way of thinking. I set this whole thing up because I want people to know about the truth. The truth will make you free. And so, I want to ask you, what is the truth? Yes, that is truly a good question. And I believe the truth, especially looking from a scientific point of view, it is anything that has the ability to repeat itself the same way every time mm -hmm. and to produce good results at the same time as well. You know, there are many great historical uh, figures that have passed through many civilizations, many nations. They have developed great empires. And we have seen and we have read in our history book about these great uh, men and great women. Mm -hmm. But today, they are only in our history books. In fact, the empires of Poland, their nation, their civilization of Poland, and it was built, I believe, on concepts and principles or precepts and principles that have not succeeded in the test of time. But among the, the rubbles of these great uh, uh, empires and these great uh, men and women around the world, there was one that rose by the name of Jesus. Many people look at him as a, a religious figure. I look at him as a uh, as a historical figure, one that came in with what he calls the truth. He says, I am the way, and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And the thing that he had said throughout these times have proven that it was really true, because up to this day, his organization, his civilization, I could say, his nation, his empire, still exists, while the rest of them collapse. I mean, he was making this statement uh, among the Romans, and the Romans laughed at him, because it was him and 12 men that was not recognized. 12 men that no one would ever choose. Mm -hmm. But when he put the truth into them, it went through all civilization and it still exists today. So the truth really is the things that will outlast mm -hmm. time, seasons, and testings. And I really believe that the principles that this great young rabbi, yeah. that he spoke about 2,000 years ago, is really true. So it's anything that can reproduce itself the same way every time. That's the truth. Yes. And so the truth stands forever, it's forever, it doesn't yes. change. And this is why your show is called To Be Free. To be free. Yes. So to be free, you need truth. You need yes. principles that will set people free. Right. I hope you took note of that. That's a very good point. Now, your book, I had to read, it was like a love letter. I just read it carefully over and over because it was so rich and something that the world needs to hear. So in your book, you speak about how we were living somewhere before we live on this earth. Can you tell me um, where was that and how did we forget? Yes, yes, that is so relevant. In fact, the book spends a whole lot more time speaking about this one particular place. There was an old ancient writer by the name of Jeremiah and he wrote uh, in his first chapter and around the fifth verse, he said that before we were sent to this planet, we were all inside of a womb, mm. inside of a, a particular environment. And while we were in this environment, our Creator spoke some things into our lives. And everything that He spoke into our lives, we were ready to fulfill. Then He put us on the earth. And when He put us on the earth, 
he had to make uh, a body that was conducive for living on the earth and then he put inside of that earth body all of the information that he wanted us to have so that we may fulfill our assignment on this earth. Mm -hmm. So the original environment really was the womb of God, which I call the Eden. So what God did was he, he took his womb from the original heavens where we are from and he stretched it down to the earth, placed it on a spot on the earth and called it the Eden. And it, it was from there that every time we remain in this original country, this original environment, we become everything that we were born to be. As soon as the two people, the first two people who was living in that environment came out of that environment, they began to age, they began to get sick, they began to have, uh, you know, fights among themselves, destruction among themselves. But as soon as they get back into the original environment, things began to work smooth again. Wow, wow. And that goes right into the next question of, you talked about a void that man has and he has this emptiness inside of him. And is it because, if I'm correct, he needs to go back to Eden, into that special place? Can yeah. you expound on that? Yeah, there is an area of science that we call genetics, but there is a, another part of genetics that is called epigenetics. Mm -hmm. And that means uh, the environment in which our genes are actually changed. In fact, right now, our environments are changing so rapidly that people are actually changing to adjust to those environments. Because environment has a way to influence anything that gets inside of it. So when you and I get inside of it, our environment uh, will influence us. You know, you look at a person who becomes an alcoholic or a drug addict. They were in an environment where there were people that were taking drugs or drinking alcohol. So the environment itself began to influence the genes, the genetic makeup of the person, that they began to feel like taking drugs or, you know, drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we need to all get back, though, to the original environment that influenced us to become everything that we were born to be. Yes. And that is the environment of Eden. Yes. Yeah. We need the environment of Eden. And this goes right into my favorite um, verse actually inside this book. This part here is on page nine. It says, just as much as our flesh needs a certain type of oxygen filled environment to stay alive, our spirit needs a spiritual environment to stay alive also. However, when our spirit leaves our body, the body begins to die. This clearly shows us how superior the, superior, the spiritual environment is to the physical environment. Yes. What an awesome statement. What an awesome verse here. Yes. Now, the environment and atmosphere has a, symbi a symbiotic relationship. You talk about it being like male and female, the atmosphere being like one, and then the environment being like the other. Can you go ahead and talk about that oh, too? I, I would love to. The male carries the sperm, the female carries the egg. If there is not a symbiotic relationship, there's an exchange between the both of them, then we would have no reproduction. It's the same thing with the environment and the atmosphere. The environment is what I would say, it's like the male that carries the sperm but it's useless until it meets the womb of the atmosphere. And so when there is a symbiotic relationship, there is a mutual agreement between the environment and the atmosphere, then we have a reproduction. So, for example, the, the environment sends up moisture. When the moisture collides with the atmosphere, then the, uh, the atmosphere takes it and begins to incubate it. If condensation takes place and so forth, and then we get a we get a production of water or rain, you would say. So without the interaction between the male and the female, you cannot have a child. Between the interaction between an environment and the atmosphere, you cannot have rain. So the both of them have to get together, they the environment and the atmosphere. They have to get together. And so, talking about environment, you spoke about how you can be in a in a city that's um, or city or that's like ghetto like or um, also in a bad area where if you have the right environment, the atmosphere is like Eden. And, and I can sort of relate to that because growing up in Miami, I remember seeing you know, murders take place and prostitutes on the streets and things happening, but there was like a safe haven because of my mother being in the Lord and having a relationship with Him, it was like an Eden. So can you share with the people that you know may live in certain bad areas or have a certain circumstance that if they're in their Eden, then okay. of course they're, yes. yes. Well, I'm gonna look right into the camera yes. and, and talk to the people. Uh, if you live in an area that might be adverse, you might be living in a neighborhood where there's high crime, there's a high crime area. Inside of every one of you is the potential of what God had spoken, where we were speaking about in, at the beginning of this program, when God uh, spoke uh, everything that 
what you're supposed to be doing on this planet is already inside of you. And what you have to do is, so of course, get the right environment. A little bit later on in the program, we're going to talk about recreating that, that environment. But now you're living in an environment that is adverse, but inside of you, you carry the seed of what God had spoken and Jeremiah had recorded in Jeremiah 1 and 5. And he had given us instruction, it's inside of you. All you have to do now is to begin to take what is on the inside of you and begin to put it into the environment that you have or where you're living at. And your environments are going to begin to change for the better. You are going to begin to change that environment just like one single man, Mahatma Gandhi, or Dr. Martin Luther King or Abraham Lincoln, all these were men who were just one person that carried the seed of God and they began to change the community, the areas that they live in, and even their entire nation. If they can do it, you can more than do it. They had exactly what God has placed inside of them. So stay right where you are and begin now one at a time, one day at a time, begin to change by bringing the principles or the truth that this young Messiah, this wrong rabbi teacher 2,000 years ago had brought to us and watch your community change right before your eyes. Yes, that was so nice he said. These great men changed the nations and it's because they had the right pitch, the right sound, the right frequency and wavelength, which we're gonna talk about right now. Behind us is the water falling and you can hear that sound, can't you? In this book, it talks about the frequency and wavelength and I want to ask you, what is sound? Yes, well, you know, again, the, that beautiful sound that you hear in the back there, it's what I believe the collection of all colors from your rainbow and every color that will exist on this planet. When you put all of them together, they will make a sound that is very similar to the sound of a waterfall. Now, in the scriptures itself, in that great textbook, the Bible, it talks about the sound of God's voice as the sound of many waters. And that's exactly what happened. From that very sound, you can pull out the sound of yellow. In fact, colors have a sound. This is why the scriptures also say, blessed is the eyes that have seen or the ears that have heard. So the things that we cannot hear, God allows us to see. But yet the thing that we are seeing has a sound. Mm. So this is the sound of God. This is why a lot of times, back in the old days, when a, when a television would go out, you would hear this hissing sound. And this hissing sound almost sounds like water. It sounds just like the waterfall. And that will put somebody to sleep. So a person that is having difficulty sleeping, can hear the sound of God or the frequencies of God and actually go to sleep and be calm and be at, at peace. Wow, that is so rich and so good. In his book, he talks about how there's many sounds and how certain sounds that are lower can actually repair and um, repair damaged DNA and some that are really high can actually, um, you know, damage certain things like tissues. So we want to talk about that, but also want to talk about this. You mentioned also how um, how the earth is groaning, it's crying out for a certain sound, a sound of a people. What sound is that that the earth is crying out for, that it's groaning for? Again, that is from the original assignment that God has placed upon every individual. Every individual has a sound, and God has placed that inside of us. We are, you know, humanity or humankind or mankind is really the, the director of an orchestra. Every instrument has a sound, but cannot make sound uniquely or the way that it should be making together in a harmony unless the director begins to give instruction. But if the directors are off tune, if they are out of context, if they are not in alignment with the original sound or the music that they're supposed to present before the orchestra, the orchestra, as good as, good as they are, they have the violin, the drum, the trumpets, the saxophone, everything in there, no sound will be made together. In fact, if you, if you allow them to make a sound, it's just going to be disastrous until the conductor begins to conduct the music again. We have been given the assignment to be the conductor of the sounds of the universe. And so if we are out of tune, we need to be in tune again. And to be in tune again, we need to be tuned by the tuner. Yeah. And that's why we get back into the word of God, the original words that the Lord has given to us, and that begins to fine tune us. And we begin to make the right sound so we can conduct the instrument. Because right now the instruments were born to make a sound, but they're making groaning and moaning sounds. Why? Because the sons of man, the conductors, need to begin to conduct music again one more time. So the entire planet will be in harmony. And so we would not have to face all these things that we are facing, these hurricanes, these tsunamis, these earthquakes and so forth, because the earth is making sounds that is actually causing 
different type of disasters to take place. Yes. So we need to begin to make the original sound, which is found in the Word of God. Wow. This is like a tweetable moment. We are the conductors, and we can actually get tuned by Heavenly Father. So let us make that right sound, because the earth is crying out for it. That's why there is certain hurricanes and um, different things in diverse places and tornadoes and in certain places that people are like, that never happens. So you have to make that right sound and take care of our earth. Would you say that's correct? Yes, we have to. We have to. So I want people, I named this, um, the name of this um, show, it's called the Be Free Show, but I wanted people to know who they are. So the topic is really, who are you? Now, in your um, book on page 19, you speak about how we are kings. And you speak about how the powers of darkness, how Satan himself is a prince. Now, can you go into how he has to um, get permission by us, we being kings? I love how you explain it in your book. Yes, and I, I'm going to talk to the audience yes, directly to the audience, in regards please. to this particular question because yes. this is so important. Yes. Uh, you know, the ultimate assignment of God is for us to make the earth look just like the country that we came from, the place where we got our original assignment, which is heaven. So God has sent us on the earth as kings. And that's why he gave the title of his only begotten son, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he supervises kings and he supervises Lord. But the prince of the power of the air, he has been given the title as prince. As you know from Commonwealth uh, laws, laws of kingdoms, a king always has an authority over a prince. And a prince cannot do anything, he has, cannot do any directives or make any change of legislation or anything in that country unless he gets permission from the king. So this is why God has given us the position and the title as a king, because we can now control whatever is in the atmosphere, whoever is also in the atmosphere. So when we begin to speak, and we speak from the environment itself, we are speaking from our legal status. We are speaking from the legal place where we have been given authority as a king. Everything else has to listen. A king, when a king speaks, a prince obeys. And the prince has to obey whatever the king says. This is a law, a law that cannot be changed. So you can be free at all times. This law is just like gravity. You cannot change gravity. No matter what you do, whatever you put up will come down. It's the same thing with the prince and the king. The prince must obey the king. That is why we have authority over the atmosphere. So when the enemy has tried, because he knows that the king has the, the right words to say, he tries to make us say the wrong things. This is why the scriptures even said, let the poor say that I am rich, because whatever you say becomes law, and the atmosphere has to obey through the prince to do whatever you say. So today, just keep repeating the things that the Lord has placed inside of you, the king has placed inside of you, because you're a king and you're a queen in the kingdom of God. Yes, you are a king. And so I hear some women say that, oh, I'm a queen. Well, that's nice if you're gonna say that, but know that king is the highest rank. And so of course the queen is, you know, the wife of a king, but God gave us that status, that rank for a reason. You know, he says that we are placed high above and um, high places with him in Christ Jesus. So everything is um, beneath us that is powers of darkness or any situation is actually underneath us because we are a king and whatever we speak, it does become law, like Dr. Pepe did say. So know that you're the ruler of this earth. You are a king, okay? So speak things of life and you'll have life okay now also um, I like how you talked about how people the the way that people would know that they are a king you speak that about this on page 36 is because they have to know this through having time with God knowing who God is so that they'll know who they are can you talk about that also yes uh, so you're saying that if you can repeat that for me one more time yes. Yes, that people will know who they are as a king because they know who God is. So the, the more they know about God, then they know and find exactly. themselves. So, so we have to begin a journey. This journey is in finding ourselves. Mm -hmm. To find ourselves, we got to go back to the one who created us. Yes. And you know, the entire text of the Bible is not a religious book. Mm -hmm. It's a book that will teach you uh, who you really are. That book is about a relationship between the creator, his kids, and the creation. And the relationship that you see established is when the prophets and the kings began to find themselves, they began to recreate Eden again on this earth. So what God allowed was, he allowed the orders to document the relationship that was between himself and his creation when the creation have actually found themselves. And so 
when they found themselves, we see triumphant victories that took place. So to find yourself, you got to find the instruction from the original manual that speaks about you. The more you read that manual, the more you begin to discover who you are. So to find out who you are, you have to read the manual again. Everything about you is documented in that manual. Read it today and you will discover who you are. Yes. Oh my goodness, I can just talk about that subject on and on and on, that topic, because it's just so important. Um, let's talk about the physics of sound. This is a, another one of my favorite, favorite verses. I had to write this one down. Yeah. It says, a wave can be, can be described as a disturbance, kingdom violence, that travels through a medium in atmosphere, tra transporting energy, the Holy Spirit from one location, heaven, to another location, Earth, without transporting matter. Let's talk about that to the world. Yeah. This is like, I just wanna repeat that one more time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the physics of sound. A wave can be described as a disturbance, kingdom violence, that travels through a medium, an atmosphere, transporting energy, the Holy Spirit, from one location, that's heaven, to another location, that's Earth, without transporting matter. Wow. My Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's probably one of my favorite quotes as well. And it's a very simple thing. When God wanted to make man, mm -hmm. when he wanted to make the flesh of the man, he spoke. Mm -hmm. So he created a wave. Yeah. And when he began, when he spoke his word, it entered into the atmosphere of the earth. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere, again, is where the prince is at. Yeah. So it created a disturbance. Without a disturbance, you cannot hear the sound that God spoke because what he spoke traveled in a straight line because space does not accentuate sound but when it hits the atmosphere it's disturbed there's a resistance that took place and it's in the resistance a wave began to form wow. and in that wave that began to be heard right. and then when that when it was heard it hit the ground or the soil that was now lying dormant mm. it possessed what we call potential energy Everything possesses potential energy until it's disturbed. Then you right. go into kinetic energy. When, it, when the sound now, the sound was heard in the soil, the soil began to vibrate and begin to create form. Mm -hmm. You know, there is an experiment that was done where someone took a sound a speaker mm -hmm. and there was a sound vibration in it and they put a corn syrup, a corn mixture in it. And as the sound began to hit the corn syrup or the mixture in there, it began to come out in the forms of animals and plants and different type of thing so it again it's a sound we need disturbances in order to create the sound mm -hmm. so that the sound will now make things so this is probably one of the main reasons why we have a resistance of the dark world it is important to have that that resistance so that what we say becomes sound that it can create what we have yes. and what we need yes mm -hmm. okay so talking about sound oh my gosh this is my favorite David and the harp I want you to explain how when Saul had that evil spirit around him, mm. the heart, the sound of the heart just soothed him and the evil spirit just went away. Yes. Yes. Hey, you know, you know, King David, his, his life is truly amazing. Um, I can see why when Jesus returns mm -hmm. to the earth, he's going to search for King David's throne. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is that when David was appointed the head of state, the prime minister then, or the president, or the king of his nation, the first thing he did was to restore the presence of God, which was symbolized by the Ark of the Covenant. When he began to speak from that particular position, his nation began to prosper. You know, when a king on the earth is appointed as a king, he's given a scepter while he's wearing on his crown and he has this, the incense. The incense actually is symbolic of his influence. The crown is symbolic of his power, but the, the scepter is symbolic of his authority. Therefore, his, in, his influence and his power is influenced by his authority. What David did was he took the scepter that man recognized kingship from. And he says, I don't want man to recognize my kingship. I want God to recognize my, my kingship. So what he did was he took the physical scepter, put it aside, and he took a harp. And the harp became the replacement of his scepter. And, and as he began to play music and worship unto God, the presence of God filled that entire nation. And today that nation has been known as the greatest nation ever exists, especially in the time of David. So the harp, he played music to invite the presence of God. The scepter will tell man's authority, but the harp will play music 
to recognize the authority of all authorities, which is the authority of God. You know, I'm wondering if that sound that he played was a lower hertz, because you speak about how, you know, the, in old time, I don't know how many years back in the book, but in old time, the music used to have a, a, a lower amount of hertz, but now the music now has higher. a higher hertz. So can you talk about why that could be the reason and what does that do when you have yes. a lower hertz and a higher hertz? Wow, this is, this is incredible. Because the sound that David had, a lot of scientists, physicists are starting to believe it was probably around 444 hertz, which is much higher. And the reason behind this is because of the material that David used. He used wood that will not break easily. So the more you stretch the string, the string becomes very strong and it can snap or it can break the material. So he used a wood that was higher in durability, malleability or what we would call, you know, it ductility and so forth. So when he stretched the string strong, it can make a higher pitch or a higher frequency sound. It was in this sound that we believe that as David began to worship, the frequency of 444 hertz began to permeate the atmosphere and it created like an environment between water and, and oil. Yeah. So you know, water and oil cannot mix. Right. So when you have evil as uh, the oil and the water as the harmony of God, you try to put them together, yeah. they just separate at yes. every time. Yes. So the evil spirit went out of Saul because the harmony mm -hmm. and the music that was created affected the environment at that particular time and demons and devils could not stay depression anxiety could not stay yes. so they become free wow. they were free immediately yes. this is the, the the name of your show wow. so to be free you have to know how to worship yeah and you have to worship like david so 444 hertz will actually remove yes. depression and anxiety from any one of your listeners or anyone right. that is a part of this this program right this time. This is why it's so important to, you know, God says that everything that has breath, breath, yes. praise the Lord. So when you praise the Lord, you, you shouldn't be like, oh, thank you. It's, it should be more like, you know, clapping and praising and, you know, making that loud sound. And I'm telling you, the enemy and the demons and devils or whatever situation cannot be around in that mist because you're making a loud sound unto him. And that causes damage to the powers of darkness. I think that is just so vital for people to know. So that's why I'm asking about sound over and over. And I have one more question about sound, and that's talking about how you mentioned a certain hertz also can repair damaged DNA, yes. and certain ones can actually um, damage the actual tissues. L Lurica, uh, there, there have been several experiments that were done um, from the university out in, there's a university out in Israel that did some uh, experiment with music sound a patient that had cancer because even cancer has a sound as well yeah. and so we live in environments that carries high pollution we have carbon dioxide carbon monoxide we have methane mm -hmm. gas we have an environment that is very unhealthy for the physical body mm -hmm. and what happens it begins to damage our DNA the DNA contains the letters that produces our genes mm -hmm. and the genes are really the instruction of what we, I believe, got from heaven that is written in our cells. Yes. And what happens is the environment of this high pollution begins to contaminate the body and the body began to begins to defragmentate the different DNA strands. What they found out at this university in Israel and also right here at Harvard and Emory University and so forth, they found out that certain music will actually vibrate the DNA strands that are broken and bring them back together and it will wow. join reconnect curing certain types of diseases removing that different type of depression and so forth this is why you see i believe that the bible is not a religious book right. it's a book about psychiatry it's a book about psychology medicine physics yeah. chemistry all those things is in there yeah. so it's telling us the type of sound that we need so yeah. that we will reconnect back the dna and they found at 528 hertz mm -hmm. which is the frequency of love we call it that is the one that reconnects DNA back together. Wow. 528. Wow. Coincidentally, 528 vibrates when white light hits green surfaces. Mm -hmm. So if you look around our planet, the majority of color that we have is normally the color of green. Mm -hmm. And so when the sunlight hits the color of green, the big trees at the back of us right now, the coconut trees, you know, in our background, there's so much greenery. Yes. God placed more green because he's a God of love. Yeah. And 528 is what they were called the love frequency. Uh -huh. That when it vibrates, it begins to repair broken DNA and broken strands in the human being. This is why we don't find a lot of murders and crimes in the countryside. 
you find it more in our cities. The reason why is because we got rid of the frequency of Law 528 by cutting down all of the trees to build buildings. Wow. And so if we learn to listen to music or play music in 528, mm -hmm. we're going to have a world that is full of love. Yeah. And so we need to return back to the original sounds of God, which is in the frequency of 528. This is one of them, 444. Yeah. Any that will add up to 3, 6, and 9, which Nikolai Tesla, Nikola yeah. Tesla, a physicist back in that time, believed in God, mm -hmm. he began to work on different frequencies that will help the human race and help creation to come back to its original place. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I want to pray for the 528 because we need love <laughs> all around this world. Yes. <laughs> we need it, we need it, we need it. And love covers a multitude, a multitude of sin. It just, you know, it covers everything. So we're going to wrap this up in a few. Um, you also speak about how the physical laws parallel the spiritual laws. Oh, how good is that? On page 108 of his book, he says, if we study nature very carefully, which we spoke about just now, we will notice that everything that is in the physical realm really came out of the spiritual realm. Physical laws parallel spiritual laws. The physical is a tangible expression of the spiritual. The physical is a tangible expression of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Let's get on that. That's oh, a good one. <laughs> but I think I'm, I'm going to look at your people directly yes, and I'll tell them about this. Uh, again, you know, I, I'm one of those people that believes in what is said has to be proven in the laboratory or somewhere. And again, a group of physicists got together and they did an experiment. They took a sound and sent it into a cylinder that had water. And when the sound, the right frequency hit the water, the water, that part of the water that it hit became light. And then the light defragmented and the defragmentation formed little small parts of matter. Well, in the good book, which I happen again to believe it's not a religious book, the text of the Bible, it says a simple thing. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. And then God spoke. And when God spoke, things began to come into being. But something happened on that very first day. Without the sun, the moon, or the stars, God created light without any physical sun, physical stars, or any physical planet. And that light came from the sound of God colliding with water. And when that water uh, received the sound in the right frequency, when it received the sound in the right frequency, it became light. And now if you take light, which is energy, you speed it up, it disappears. You slow it down, it becomes matter. That is the same formula that Albert Einstein had, which is E is equal to mc squared. Energy, which is that light, is equal to the matter speeded up by the speed of light twice. And so God created something that was amazing. And that was, he created moisture and water all around us. So he gave us the same environment he had when he created things, which was water. He gave us water in the form of moisture or humidity. So whatever we speak is now converted into light and the light now is converted into matter. So we can speak things into our lives and speak things into our environment, that adverse environment, that crime infested environment, and that environment is going to begin to produce the things that we want to be produced, which is the heavens on this earth. So again, start speaking the things of God and you will be free. You will be set free. And that's how this call, this show is called Be Free. You will be made free if you just speak life. In closing, I just want to wrap up the Be Free show with this verse here. Page 113, talking about the hydraulic cycle of praise. God is interested in bringing all the kingdoms of this present world under his perfect rulership so that the earth would survive and remain for the sake of humanity. Take that with you, take it into your heart, and just receive it and let your mind be set free. Thank you for watching and be free. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my YouTube channel. And remember, be free.